the exclusive home of the Greetings and welcome inside the McLeod Center in Cedar Falls, Iowa, as the University of Northern Iowa Panthers, preseason favorites in the Missouri Valley Conference, host last year's national runner-up, the Iowa Hawkeyes. I'm Eric Braley. This is Adam DeJody, former Panther coach. And Adam, this feels like a big one. This is a big one. You know, head coach Tanya Warren's Panthers have accomplished some special things in her Hall of Fame career. Four NC uh, conference championships, three NCAA tournament appearances, a WNIT Final Four. Her teams have beaten Iowa. They've beaten Iowa State. This one feels a little bit different today. And it feels different because the Panthers welcome in defending national runner-up Iowa, number three ranked Iowa, in front of a sold-out McLeod Center here in Cedar Falls. The eyes, really, of the women's basketball scene nationwide are here in Cedar Falls this afternoon. Buckle up, it's going to be a good one. Let's take a look at the keys to the game, the board keys for the Iowa Hawkeyes. I really think it's important for uh, the Hawkeyes to develop a consistent second score. Monica Sonano did that last year, and she has moved on. Who's that going to be for the Hawkeyes early on in this campaign, 23-24 uh, campaign? And then they needed to defend you and I's handoffs and ball screens. The Panthers are going to stress their defense with lots of things that might need to be switched, things like that. How do the Hawkeyes handle that out on the perimeter? And now the four keys to the game for the Panthers looking to get a big upset on their home court. They really need to try to make Caitlin Clark the best player in the country, maybe the one of the best players of all time, one-dimensional. What does that mean? It means she can't have 38 points, 12 assists, and 9 rebounds if the Panthers expect to win. She can have a lot of points, but they need to keep her assist down in that four to five uh, category down there. And then they need to make threes. You and I is a terrific three-point shooting team. They're big shoot threes. I look for them to need to shoot about 38% from three to have a chance here this afternoon. It's time now for the starting lineups. And first, the Iowa Hawkeyes starting five. Kate Martin, Caitlin Clark, Gabby Marshall, Sharon Goodman, and Hannah Stolke. That 6'2 sophomore forward out of Cedar Rapids, Washington, 17.6 and a half rebounds. She's a big presence. She's a tremendous athlete. Her best uh, trait is that she runs the floor and gets the passes from Caitlin Clark. She's really bouncy. She can really go. But she's different than Monica Sanano a year ago. But she needs to uh, establish the interior for the Hawkeyes. Our player watch, though, no surprise, Caitlin Clark. But she has the potential to make it a historic moment for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Just a generational talent. Maybe one of the best basketball players that the women's scene has, has ever seen. Um, needs 15 points today to tie the program record to be the all-time leading scorer. Um, she has changed the sport in that the number of eyeballs that she has brought to the women's basketball world. It's going to be fun to watch her in person here this afternoon. She's averaging 36 points per game so far this season. Now the starting lineup for the UNI Panthers, who are also undefeated this year. It's Maya McDermott, Grace Buffelli, uh, Kiva Lauby, uh, Sh Shatia Wettering, and... Caitlin Morgan, the starting five, and Maya McDermott averaged 15 points a game last year. She's first team all Missouri Valley Conference. Well, Maya McDermott is the catalyst that makes everything go for this UNI Panther offense. One thing I know about Maya, she will not be rattled by the environment here this afternoon. Let's take a look at our CFU Panther watch, and Shatia Wettering was playing for the Hawks at this time last year. She was, and now she plays for the Panthers. Welcome to the transfer portal of uh, modern area of, of college athletics. Shatia is a great player. She's going to be a big impact for the Panthers in this season in the Missouri Valley Conference play, especially with her length. How does she handle the transition today from being on the Hawkeyes to the Panthers? We'll keep an eye on her as this is a big-time showdown here from Cedar Falls, Iowa, in-state matchup. The UNI Panthers hosting the Iowa Hawkeyes. Back with more, this is Basketball presented by Learfield. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at High V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the High V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the High V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store wide every time you shop and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for High V Perks. It's free and easy. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted 4F Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend, haul, or tow just about anything, anywhere. 
That's because they're built Ford tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Now lease a built Ford Tough F-150 STX for $3.99 a month for 36 months. Only at your local Ford dealer. At Mid American Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. At Raising Cane's, we focus on being the best at one thing and getting it right every time. Which is why every chicken finger meal we serve is marinated, hand-battered, cooked to order, and made just for you. Quality isn't complicated, and our menu is approved. Great and James chicken fingers, one love. <laughs> Skip the line and order with our app or online. You and I Basketball is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Visit buyfornow.com. FiberNet TV from Cedar Falls Utilities. Get connected to the power of service. See a few FiberNet TV from Cedar Falls Utilities. Get connected to the power of service. Adam DeJody, Eric Braley, ready for this one. Electric environment as you and I alum, Lisa Bluter, in her 24th year at the University of Iowa, a 1983 alum. You see her resume there, 39 total years coaching at Drake before coming to the Iowa Hawkeyes. She feels good about her team. And Tanya Warren, the winningest coach in you and I women's basketball history, her 17th year. Tremendous leadership by both of these programs. And they have their teams prepared for what should be a knockdown, drag out battle. The starting five for Iowa it'll be Molly Davis, Kate Martin, Caitlin Clark, Gabby Marshall, and Hannah Stolke for the UNI Panthers. It's Maya McDermott, Kaylin Morgan, Kiba Lauby, Grace Buffelli, and Emerson Green. For shot off the mark, and the Panthers in their home lot uniforms bring across the half court line. I've coached a lot of games in this building, Eric. I've never seen anything like this. The electricity is intense. But Valley, pump fake. Good block by Stolke. Shot clock does not reset. McDermott goes to work. And still no points in this game thus far. I always like the opening few minutes of a basketball team. It's a little bit of a slow dance. And the team's trying to figure out who's guarding who. What kind of defense are we playing? Then when the kids relax, it usually settles into what the game's going to look like. Stolke, we talked about her in the pregame show. She's averaging 17.6.5 rebounds. She's 16 of 19 from the floor this year. And what you just saw on that last possession is her biggest strength. What can her run the floor right now? She's the first person down there. Molly Davis hit her last time for an easy two. Morgan, unable to make the shot a whistle. And this is going against you and I. The first foul of the game. And if, if that, honestly, that, that's close. If, if that's going to be called, I think we're going to be here three and a half hours. <laughs> Didn't see much there that warranted a whistle. Clark, the inbounder, underneath her own hoop. Keep an eye on Gabby Marshall. She's 0 for 9 this year, has not scored in her 30 minutes of action. All nine shots, three pointers. Clark misses. Panthers get the ball back. Morgan doesn't have numbers. And she can't finish. We have Iowa City native Caitlin Morgan guarding Iowa City legend Caitlin Clark. As we see Kate Martin get downhill in transition early. So many interesting matchups here. As we see Clark navigate over to Morgan in the corner. Caitlin Clark is a good defender, but she has to preserve energy. So she doesn't always go a million miles an hour on defense every time. Panthers are on the board. It's Grace Buffelli. She's the preseason conference player of the year. Nice move. One Division I scholarship wow. offer. Wow. The Valley, a little undersized against the Power Five schools, is dominant in the Missouri Valley Conference. 
Offensive rebound, second chance points, and she's on the board. And one thing I noticed earlier that you and I messed up the ball screen coverage on the left wing that time, and it's because of how loud it is in here. They simply could not get their signal communicated. Emerson Green, a little bit of contact as she drives into the lane. We're going the other way. Clark with it. Trying to reach in and grab it there is Lowby. Hawks open three. Offensive rebound again. And the putback. And a chance at the three-point play. That's Hannah Stolke is, a, is an elite offensive rebounder. She doesn't have a great back-to-the-basket game like Monica Sedano, who she replaced at the five spot for the Hawkeyes. But she can go get it off the glass. And you saw that just now. Timeout set. Eight to two is our score here as Coach Tanya Warren talks with the official. You're watching you and I versus Iowa from Learfield. Rejuvenate the rooms you spend your time in with the help of fish sticks. Have you always wanted that dream kitchen or luxurious bathroom? Now is the time to start turning that dream into reality. At Fish Sticks, we not only have a beautiful showroom to spark ideas, but we also have outstanding designers who will work with you from vision to reality. Countertops, cabinets, backsplashes, and more. We're passionate about getting the right product at the right price. Stop in today to Fish Sticks because you deserve to love your home. Enjoy a better buying experience at Foster's Mattress. A new mattress or ultra comfort sleep chair will help you sleep better, wake up more refreshed, and have more energy than ever before. Hurry in to take advantage of the Black Friday doorbuster deals at Foster's Mattress. You won't want to miss these savings. Sorry, no layaway or rain checks available on Black Friday offers. We want you to feel comfortable and welcome while finding the best mattress for your lifestyle. Because every night is important. Hi! Need you, Black home deserves the best. Seamless Exterior is the expert you can trust for all your exterior needs. We'll get the job done right, whether it's siding, windows, roofing, or gutters. Schedule your free estimate today and love your home's new look with Seamless Exterior. We were just amazed at the transformation of the house. Our windows don't leak anymore. <laughs> we would definitely recommend Seamless because we get tons of questions, people asking us who did our siding, who did our windows. You know, we're very happy with the results. 8-2, to two. the Iowa Hawkeyes have made half their shots, 4 of 8 from the floor. You and I just shooting 16%, 1 of 6 field goal percentage. Great look at a full arena. And Adam, the Hawkeyes are one of the best teams in the country at a couple of things, and they're showing that early, especially offensively. Last year, they led the country in scoring offense and assists per game and field goal percentage. Those are three really important offensive stats. The Hawkeyes led the country in all three last year. Offensive rebound for you and I as they get another crack at it here. McDermott and Buffelli, first team all Missouri Valley Conference preseason honorees. Here's the Iowa transfer going to work. And Chatea Wettering, whistle, stops the shot clock with five on it, and a foul. And that is the first personal charge against Hannah Stolke. Great take by Buffelli. That's what she gets. She's a bull in a china shop a lot of times. And in the Valley, she's, she has the size to go against it. In, in this game against a power five opponent like Iowa, they're going to have another inch or two, and that can affect you around the rim. How Buffelli handles that will be key. Good early start getting to the free throw line. A 65% free throw shooter 
Last year, 138 makes out of 213 attempts. She had almost half of the total attempts the Panthers took last year from the charity strike. And it's certainly a growth area for here this year to be a goal. She needs to get 75% or so from the line. But she gets there so often. She has all the points for you and I. A two-possession lead for the Hawks. You see Sharon Goodman come into the game. Northeast Iowa native from Cresco, Iowa. She's a different player than Hannah Stolke. She is a true five. Great back to the basket. Doesn't jump as well as Stolke. Doesn't run the four as well. But Coach Jan Jensen, who coaches the post at Iowa, does a terrific job developing those players. You see a backdoor cut by Clark. Her first points of the game. Clark needs now 14 more to become the career point leader in Iowa women's basketball history. She's averaging 36 points a game. Good finish with contact with the left hand. And that is intentional by, by you and I. They are going to put Sharon Goodman in space as much as they can, even if it's against their five. Grace Papelli. Hand in her face does not phase Clark. One thing I want you to watch, when she goes left, she wants to shoot. It's step back, it's sidestep when she goes left. A lot of teams will try and force her to the right. She's a better passer going right and a better scorer uh, to the rim, but she loves to shoot going left. He's the coach, Adam DeJody. Panthers again shooting lows early on, two of nine from the floor. That's not going to cut it if you want to beat the top three team in the country. And Gabby Marshall sinks her first three-pointer of the year. Gabby's getting a little bit more attention than last year in the struggle from the three-point line. That's a good sign if you're a Hawkeye fan, getting her off on the three-pointer early. McDermott, 0 for 2 from the floor in transition. And the Panthers clear out with the rebound. 17-5, our score. Opening quarter of play in front of a sold-out McLeod Center in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Another foul. Again, you see Buffelli in space versus Goodman. That is very intentional today. Trying to get her, make her defend all the way to 22 feet out from the basket. Speaking of 22, Taryn Wharton, the sophomore, checks in. As well as number 14, Riley Wright. The chess match between these coaches. Not a real deep bench for either the Hawkeyes or the Panthers. Even in the national runner-up season last year, the Hawkeyes don't play a ton of players. As we see Addie O'Grady into the game, another really tall player, six six foot four. Out of Aurora, Colorado, averages nine points in 20 minutes of action. Panthers can't buy a bucket. Clark trying to get a little separation here from their in-state rival. Marshall. Wide open, but unable to hit that shot. And if the Hawkeyes have aspirations of making that deep run in the NCAA tournament, clearly Gabby Marshall, the fifth-year guard out of Cincinnati, Ohio, is going to be a big factor. She has to be. She can really impact the game from two to threes. You know, for you and I, this is not obviously an ideal start. However, you just need to stay connected. Stay within range. That basket helps. Filling it up in the first quarter, Grace Buffelli. Showing the multitude of moves she has when she has the ball in her hands. As a double team comes. The weathering whistled for the foul as Addison O'Grady was in the paint. Let's take another look at it here. Great pass by Clark splits the double team. You know, she gets so many accolades as a scorer. Heck, she had 44 points on Thursday night. But I'm telling you, she is a better passer than she is a scorer, and that's scary. First player in D1 history to have 1,000 points and 300 assists in a single season last year. Currently, she's on the bench, but she's number one in the nation in scoring average and number one in assist to turnover ratio. Has the ball in her hands a lot, but doesn't turn it over. Almost an offensive rebound, and they do track it down. That is the third offensive rebound for the Hot Guys here. Well, if you like offensive basketball, this is your kind of game. Because both these teams are so good on offense, and we see Molly Davis go to the ground. These two teams are tremendous on offense, and when you watch, I want you to take it, watch their spacing. They've got the floor space. They understand matchups. Neither team takes a lot of bad shots. Fun to watch. Coming to the scores table, a transfer from Iowa State. Kylie Fierbach, the six-foot junior guard, averaging 17 minutes 
four points and two and a half rebounds. And the Panthers go to Rachel Hagala. She's a transfer as well who stepped in in the starting role the last five or six games of last year when the starter, Cynthia Wolf, went down with a season-ending injury. Fearbach last year was her first year with the Hawkeyes. Missed a lot of time with injury. She's a nice addition for them. They really shoot the three as well. Both coaches trying to get players into this game early in the first quarter. Get their feet underneath them. It's pretty electric in here. You want them to settle in so that they're been in the game if you need them at crunch time later this afternoon. A 13-point deficit with still four minutes to go opening quarter. UNI continues to struggle. They're not taking bad shots. The shots just aren't falling. Clark is on the bench and stealing it away for the Panthers. It's a key minutes here with Caitlin Clark on the bench, obviously. But the Hawkeyes are just trying to keep their lead where it was at. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily need to extend it or expect, expect to extend the lead. Give her a minute here or two minutes there. Now she's back in the game. Lisa Bluter, legendary coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Year after year, the Hawkeyes, one of the best in the Big Ten, one of the best in the country. Tough pass, and it's stolen away. Clark has options, now slows it down here. Good defense by the true sophomore out of Omaha, Nebraska on Clark. You know, I watched the Virginia Tech game that the Hawkeyes played on Thursday, and it was almost like Virginia Tech didn't even have Caitlin Clark on the scouting report. There was no special consideration to her at all. You and I held her to 1-3 last year, one of the two teams in the country to do that. So they know how to guard her. A matter of doing it is a different story. Open three, rims out. Well, the Panthers aren't walking the ball across the half-court line, are they? They want on four. Little scoop shot layup is good. That's a gutsy play by Riley Wright. But you have to stress Iowa on defense by getting in space against the favorable matchup. And Kayla Clark knows she can't foul. She, they do not want her in foul trouble. We see Riley Wright with another steal. So when you get Kayla Clark in space, you got to go at her. Called for the travel. She did the jump stop and tried to pivot. Wright, a redshirt sophomore out of Marion, Iowa. Here's a look at that steal. Hard to tell her to slow down when she made just a, a terrific play on just the possession before, but you and I is hanging around here, staying connected as we near the end of the first quarter. Right, gets her Panther power in there and forces a turnover. You and I really wants to rush the tempo here and points off turnovers. Great play by Riley right in there. She is added a spark here late in this first quarter off the bench for you and I. Spark off the bench, that's always a good thing when you find yourself trailing double digits. One of the top teams in the country. Another missed shot as Green. Look who comes up with it. All right, under two to play, first quarter. Last, last time they went Emerson Green in the post against Molly Davis. A great shot. Ted Twitter just didn't go in. And we saw Caitlin Clark with a turnover down there. Clark's a little bit rattled. She hasn't been able to get off. Her team's doing great. She just hasn't impacted the game like she normally does. I'm sure that will change. Very poor shooting, though. You and I just 4 of 16 from the floor. 0 for 2 from deep. Meanwhile, the, Pan uh, the Hawkeyes are 7 of 15 from the field. Just two of nine from behind the arc. Time that perfect swatted away. Oh, Grady. This is what Clark's great transition. We have two on her. Clark has five points as this first quarter is winding down. Well, the MVP off the bench. Oh, that's a terrific defense by Satya Walker. She guarded. Watch this. As she stays in front of the ball, no hands. Squares her up and then blocks it. That is a terrific play against Kate Martin, her former teammate of a year ago. Played three seasons at Iowa before transferring. Made 15 appearances for the Hawkeyes. You don't think she's guarded that exact move 100 <laughs> times in practice? Out of Montezuma, Iowa. Both these coaches really recruit the state of Iowa. 
Eight alive. Draws the foul. And with the buck 11 remaining first quarter, feels like the tide, the momentum's shifting just a little bit here. Absolutely. O'Grady goes vertical that time, still got called for the foul, but such a fun environment because every time somebody scores, a lot of fans, even though the four <laughs> UNI fans in Iowa, it gets loud in here so often. This is, this is, this is fun. Hey, Dola. Four starts last year in 27 games. A 60% free throw shooter. Well, our broadcast is brought to you by High V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. High V proudly supports the UNI Panthers. Hope you're enjoying this broadcast. It has been a nice addition to this roster a year ago. Division two transfer from Bemidji State. She can shoot three. She can post up. Iowa has not scored in the last three minutes. It's going to be Panther basketball with 56 seconds to play. And it looks like, boy, we, would, we don't want to give Molly Davis a wide open three, but you kind of have to pick your poison when you're UNI. That time, Caitlin Clark, ball screen left side of the floor. They soft trap it. You're going to leave somebody open. You'd rather be Molly Davis than Caitlin Clark. Green has had some outstanding shots. She has the size advantage over Marshall. Another missed opportunity, though. Needed to use the left hand that time. She went right hand. Would have been a much easier finish with her left, which she's totally capable of. Panthers won out of their last five shots from the floor. The hot guys haven't scored in now four minutes of game time. Shot clock turned off. What do you draw up here, coach? Best matchup possible. If you're looking at the defense, Well, they just pre-switched there. Now you, I was going zone. Still plenty of time. And a foul called with 10 seconds. And that is the fifth team foul. Great awareness by Riley Wright. She felt the pressure. When you feel pressure like that, you drive it right into their hip. It's a foul. Any sustained contact is going to be a foul like that. Great play by Riley Wright. Get a chance for the base. Actually, a chance for free throws because that's... In the bonus here. Women's basketball, two shots when you get to five fouls. Unlike the men's game, that it resets at the corner, which I like, because then you don't get stuck in the bonus for an hour and a half. <laughs> Free throw is good. And you and I pulls everyone off the lane. Crossed over the line. And the Hawks get the final shot here. All right, it's been four minutes and four seconds since the Hawkeyes have scored. Can they score in the final 10? Full court pressure will be applied as Clark will inbound underneath the Panther hoop. Can they? Yes. Will they? Stay tuned. Midcourt at five. Open look. And near end of first quarter. Score the Iowa Hawkeyes 20, the UNI Panthers 11. The Panthers dug a hole early but got back into this game. You're watching UNI versus Iowa from Winterfield. Subaru Forest, the wilderness, to discover all the places that make us feel something more. Subaru is the National Park Foundation's largest corporate donor, helping expand access for all. All your friends might be having babies, but you've got your own little bundle of joy right here. Just 99 cents for warm, chili, melty cheddar cheese, and crunchy Fritos wrapped in a tortilla blanket. Now that's a deal, baby. The Sonic 99 cent Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap. Discover different Black Friday deals at Target each week. Get low prices and early Black Friday deals at Target. The State Farm Champions Classic Double Header begins Tuesday at 7 on the ESPN. 
It's in-season tournament time. It's NBA on ESPN time. Broncos Bills on ESPN and ABC. The McLeod Center. The building this game is being played in 18th season here. Before it was the West Gym. 167 victories for you and I in this building. Largest crowd previously, 2011, 4,077. This thing sold out in less than an hour. Over 7,000 packed in here. There you see the stat breakdown. As you and I trailing by nine after shooting just 22% from the floor. One of your keys was make threes. They're 0 for 2 in that category. But yep. Valley needs to be careful as she's so valuable to this team. And that is her second. That's going to be an interesting decision. Ooh. There's no time for that decision as we see Hadela come back in the game for Buffelli. That is a, a huge factor in this game. You talk about the McLeod Center here. This is obviously the first sellout in the history of the program. As we see Stolke get loose on the out of bounds play, but one thing to know, Iowa plays in front of these environments all the time. This is actually, thanks to Chris Kleinman Schultz, the radio voice for the Panthers for this nugget, this is actually the smallest venue that Iowa will play in all year long. So as awesome as this is, as electric as it is, this is just Sunday for the Panthers, or for the Hawkeyes, excuse me. Yeah, the previous games, 14,998 in attendance and 15,196. All right, the Hawks got the bucket and ended their near five-minute scoring drought from the first quarter. The defense results in a missed shot. Crucial stretch of this game. Leads at 11. See the nickel dimer. Leads at 11. You've got Pafeli on the bench. Cannot let this thing get out of hand for the next few minutes for you and I. Well, a couple starters for you and I have not scored in this game. McDermott, the preseason first team all conference honorees, 0 for 2. Morgan's, the senior, is 0 for 2. Lowby hasn't attempted a shot. And Green is 0 for 6 so far. These two teams know each other really well. And the Hawkeyes know that Lowby likes to shoot threes. So they're not going to let her do that. Working hard to get that offensive rebound. And the officials are talking about the call. Shatia Wettering is, is just a nice athlete to you and I to have. I don't know what's the call here. I believe Wettering is called for going over the back. So that's, so that's her second. So your two of your better post players are saddled with two fouls with an eternity on the clock before halftime. It's just going to have to be some decisions made in terms of playing people with, with foul issues. A physical game. Offensive charge. This one's against Stolke. Check the replay here. Looks like Emerson Green is set. She has, her heels have to be outside of the restricted zone. It looks like they were. Great play. So now Stolke heads to the bench. And coming in to replace her is Goodman. A lot of upperclassmen on this Iowa Hawkeye roster. Looks like that's two fouls on Anna Stolke. Have to change your game and approach depending on how it's being called. Bring it up for Maya McDermott. That was a key to the game. How they guard dribbles, handoffs, and ball screens that time. And they tried to go under the handoff. Great action by the Panthers. Maya McDermott never going to turn down that look. She averaged 14.7 points, 2.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game last year. Shooting nearly 50% from the floor. Clark with the ball in her hands. That looks like a mismatch. And a foul called on the floor. Oh, they, they're just really using their whistles. Calling this game tight. We're going to see a lot of different players today. This many fouls. Iowa runs some really good out of bounds play. Saw that time. It was almost a four switch. 
That time you and I doesn't. There's no need to switch that action. As you see Clark with a little extra step. That's her third turnover. She's number one in the country in assist to turnover ratio. She has three. And, and interesting note, you and I had a bunch of turnovers last year, 20 in the game. Now we don't have quite as many. Today, I was the team that's turning it over. Bring it again. You can see the frustration on her face as she's had so many shots just rim out. But she earns a trip to the free throw line after this play. Brother A.J. Green, two-time Larry Bird Player of the Year for the UNI Panthers in the Missouri Valley Conference. Got some run time last night for the Milwaukee Bucks. Father is assistant coach for the Iowa State Cyclones. Long time. And the Iowa State Cyclones, is that final, Adam? Yeah, they won this afternoon. So I'm sure Kyle got done with the game. He's checking out his daughter's game against his state rival Iowa. Panthers just four of seven from the free throw line here. Kind of a scoring lull the last seven or eight minutes of game time. We've lost a little bit of our flow. Some, yeah. of, that, some of that's the call, but they'll settle back in. A lot of contact. Uh, travel is called as Goodman was facing Adela. The Panthers have only two turnovers, and there are six make it seven now turnovers for Lisa Bluter's team. Making this a seven point differential. The Panthers playing better than the Hawks here as of late. Lowby into the paint. Can't finish, offensive rebound. Clark tips it away and we're going the other way. That was a great play by Kaylin Clark. Hit the bottom of the net, Gabby Marshall, fifth year guard out of Cincy. That's a bad sign for you and I, Gabby, Gabby Marshall with two early threes. Clark choosing to attack. And then a foul called against the Panthers, Terran Wharton. It's really great strategy by you and I, how they defend Caitlin Clark in transition. And there's a random double team, but it doesn't stay forever. They leave, just got caught a little too physical after the double team left. They're doing a really good job on her, they're just getting called for some fouls. Well, Clark needs just 16 points to surpass Megan Gustafson, who had 2,804 for Iowa's all-time scoring title. She's been held in check as far as Caitlin Clark is concerned. And she obviously is going to break that record, she'll probably break it today, but it, coming from my coaching background, it, when, when kids have these milestones, these really major ones, sometimes it can affect them, even if they say it's not, but you know it's a big deal, and maybe you're thinking about it, I'm not saying that's the case with Katie Clark today, but a little slower start than normal to the first team All-American and National Player of the Year. She's only put up four shots, two of four from the floor, one of three from deep. Great to pass by Terry Wharton. Green step back long. Wharton offensive rebound. No hesitation. And another shot that just misses from the top of the key. That was a great look. Officials are going to talk and see who gets this basketball. And they say, you and I ball with 6.24 to go before halftime. Checking in, Sydney Falter, the junior guard out of Chicago, averaging 20 minutes and 10 rebounds per game. Really interesting, both teams playing without their starting five right now, so it's pretty much even in terms of that. Hawks out rebounding the Panthers 22-16. Emerson Green keeps putting shots up, but Clark, a little bit of contact, another miss, but an offensive rebound. Remember, you and I star player has been sitting on the bench for a long time as she got two quick fouls. And, and Sharon Goodman is a newer player for Iowa, didn't play a ton last year, battled some injuries, but you see Hayden look for three. But her size is something you just don't see in the Missouri Valley Conference. The sharpshooter for the Panthers, Long, as Lowby had a good look at it, but you and I now just one of six from deep. 
Martin. And both teams shooting cold. And that's the right basketball play for Caitlin Clark. She, she took it downhill. She tried to make a play. Kate Martin is a good player and wide open. Got to give her the ball. Last time she took the three. This time she drives and gets fouled on her way to the rim. It's a shooting foul, and it's two personals against Goodman. The fouls are racking up here for both these teams as Riley Wright will check in for Maya McDermott. A couple more subs. Fierbach and O'Grady checking in for the Iowa Hawkeyes here. I mean, I hate to continue to bring it up, but UNI is shooting terrible. They are 16%, 5 of 30, and four of, uh, 1 of 6 from behind the arc. And part of that is missing some shots. Emerson Green's had some really good looks. Part of it is the length from Iowa. When, when you're a mid major sure. program, even an elite mid major program like Iowa, when you play these Power 5 teams, everybody's an inch or two longer. And that's just a difference. Doesn't mean you can't win the game, but it does impact your shooting because you're not used to that length, both on the perimeter and down low. Last year, you and I averaged 75 points per game. Right now, they're at 16. Meanwhile, the Iowa Hawkeyes, 91 points last season. We're under five to play before half. Great set by the Hawkeyes. That was some false motion on purpose to get a high post touch to get Clark the back door because you and I is somewhat face guarding Caitlin Clark when she doesn't have the ball. It's tough to defend those back cuts. Called against Lauby, who hit the deck, and that's her second. And that sends us to a commercial break. 30 to 16, Caitlin Clark closing in on the all-time scoring record, record for the University of Iowa. Back with more, you're watching Panther Basketball on the Panther Sports TV Network from Learfield. Tobacco Credit Union works to ensure members are well on their way to living a life worth loving. We're committed to enhancing well-being and strengthening the cooperative through programs like Thank Yous. This year, Tobacco members share more than $3.3 million in Thank Yous by saving, borrowing, and planning for the future. When we consistently work together to boost financial well-being, we power the credit union, creating brighter community for all. Not a member? Join the movement where member ownership pays. Visit a Tobacco branch or join online at tobacco.com. At the moment when your feet finally touch the sand, or when you follow little steps along an ancient path, or even cutting through the white, white snow, and holding on to something so precious that you've waited for, when you finally let go and live in the wonder of the world, all you have to do is just say go. Fly CID. Advertising is really all about building up relationships. My relationship with the business owner, the business owner with their relationship with consumer walking through the doors, with their community. Being on TV, you build credibility. People see you on TV and they're like, oh, I know that person. It's, it's all about branding. It's all about building that, that trust with your, your clients.
The band is here, as well as 7,000 other people. A sold out McLeod Center for this in-state matchup, but Iowa sort of turn it around as they sit with their largest lead of the game. Adam DeJody, Eric Braley on the call. You had a chance to coach with Tanya Warren. It's a chess match with some of the things strategy-wise. And Grace Buffelli, your best player, has been on the bench almost this entire second quarter. Yeah, tough to get in a rhythm there. I think overall they're really happy with how they're playing and defending Caitlin Clark. The bad news is they're doing a great job on Caitlin Clark, and they're still down 14 points. That's not a good sign. If you are you and I, just need to stay connected here heading to halftime. Buffelli has just played five minutes, but she's three of five from the floor with those two fouls. Tough shot in the paint, gets it to go. And the run continues for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Deliberate post ISO set coming out of timeout. It's a 10 to 2 run over the last 4.05. Floater and bench shot for the underclassmen out of Omaha. Great take with the left hand by Terry Wharton. Big basket by UNI. Tanya Warren is kind of point guard you here at UNI. That's the list of so many point guards that have had tremendous careers. Clark sitting at eight points right now with 3.40 to go before halftime. They're on the foul and free, more free throws coming for Morgan. Clearly an emphasis. That's the second or third time they've identified Caitlin Clark playing defense in transition and gone right at her to make her make a decision if she really wants to waste a foul on this. That's her only her first, but they can add up pretty quickly. Great heads up play by uh, Caitlin Morgan. We saw Riley Wright do the same thing earlier and get two points. Free throw shooting woes continue for UNI and that is very frustrating for that coaching staff. Well, you're playing a great team. You're playing number three ranked team in the country. You're going to pull off an upset, and this would be an upset. Very capable of winning the game. you got to make free throws. Morgan's brother and sister are stars here for the men's and women's basketball program. Nice action again. The reverse layup can't connect. Good back cut by Gearbach off the low block entry. Just missed the reverse layup. Nifty little move to get into the paint and finish with that left hand. High motor play by Taryn Wharton, but she's playing, also playing great defense on the ball. Making the most of her nine minutes of action. Open look for Marshall again. Short. Stein for the rebound and free throws. Again, she averages 10 rebounds per game in just 20 minutes of action in the two previous games this year. Here's another look at it. I'm, I'm watching the non-verbal body language by Caitlin Clark. She's not happy right now, and she's not impacting the game with her scoring, and she is yelling at her teammates. She's throwing her hands in the air, and they're up by 11 points. Very interesting development right now. Free throw is good. One more coming as we're under three minutes to play here. Two years ago in this very game in the very court, Caitlin Clark received a technical foul for t essentially taunting the UNI bench. Never know what's going to happen with these in-state rivalries. I absolutely love that the Iowa and Iowa State coaching staffs do the home and home. Used to happen with the men's programs and they went to a neutral site and now they said, nope, we're good. Well, it's really great. We talked about it off the air, but it does. It really helps grow the game of women's basketball. And I think Bill Fenley, uh, Lisa Bluter, all the staffs realize that this is important for women's basketball. There's a lot of kids here, uh, a lot of girls wearing Kayla Clark jerseys, a lot of girls wearing you and I gear jerseys as well. This just helps grow the game. And those four Division One coaches in Iowa are very aware of that. Basketball, so good in the state of Iowa. You and I picked to win the Missouri Valley Conference. Drake right behind them. Iowa currently third in the nation. Oh, and by the way, the Iowa State Cyclones are always in the contending for that Big 12 title. Yeah, they, they've been to a few NCAA tournaments, two 16 <laughs> elite eights themselves. So it is such a, a women's basketball tradition, rich state, especially when you're talking about a state of three million people. Always keeping an eye on the triple-double watch for Clark. She has eight points, six rebounds, and four assists. Also, three turnovers, which is very uncharacteristic for her. Fouled in the act of shooting, and that's three free throws for Clark. And that's a good call. You have to give her room to land, and this time, Riley Wright does a good job, but then you can't come into that shooter zone. You have to call that every single time. 
Hawks are three of eight from the floor, one of four from deep, and she's one of two from the free throw line. You saw that sidestep three going left. That's her favorite shot. She loves that going left. Doesn't really shoot it going right. Going right, it's, it's mostly drive pass. She's also just one triple-double away. It's been just the second Division One player to record a triple-double in four different seasons. It's not easy to get triple-doubles. <laughs> so she almost averages it. <laughs> so. All right, 36-23. Time ticking down here. Opening half of play inside the McLeod Center on the UNI campus. Panthers beat the Hawkeyes four years ago by double digits. I was at that game. It was, it was never a game. Um, testament to Iowa player development. I was at that game. And Panthers win by 22. Monica Sedano, I think, was a sophomore, a freshman. Didn't impact the game. Wasn't a very good player, quite frankly. Developed into a first-team all-conference player. Uh, so that was a fun game a few, uh, four years ago. And it's the 21st time in 22 years the Hawkeyes have played all three other Division I programs Incredible. this day. I think the only one not was during the, the COVID year. One of them got canceled. Another nugget from Fred Chris Klein on Schultz. But just really cool environment here today. Clark with the basketball and a sizable lead. Looking to add to it before intermission. Hope you're enjoying this Sunday matinee. Iowa's had a great week collecting a couple wins already. Harley Dickinson on the sixth. Virginia Tech ranked fifth in the country on the ninth. And now here against you and I. Well, and their schedule doesn't get I mean, their schedule is I, I commend Coach Bluter for taking on the gauntlet as she had. Travels out to the East Coast to play number eight, Virginia Tech. After this game, which is preseason Valley favorite for you and I, they get Kansas State, they get Drake, they have Iowa State. They have a lot of good non-conference games for a team. Um, compare that to probably like the Iowa men's basketball non-schedule, non-conference schedule, or even Iowa State. Like, this is really cool for the game. Clark at the free throw line. Last year, she was tremendous free throw shooter. This year, 15 of 20. And if you're you and I, you want to keep this thing at 10 or under. It's at 13 right now. Get it to 9 at 10. 9 or 10 at halftime. Take a break. Make some adjustments. But you can't afford this thing to swell to 16 or 17 and expect to have a shot. Clark with 13 points. A little slow to get up. Green might have rolled her ankle. We play on. Trying to get it to Hadela. up. And it's thrown away. To the other end. And a jump ball is called. It's coming in to tie up. The Hawks was Riley Wright. Here's a look at it. Coming right at you. Riley Wright just made some great plays. She, she has come on and made an impact in a positive way. Look for her to have a few more second and a half minutes. She's done a terrific job. Again, Grace Buffelli has been on the bench almost this entire second quarter. The Panthers' leading scorer, rebounder. She will be well rested for that second half. Open look. But also, the Iowa Hawkeyes have had a couple players with two fouls that have been getting a lot of bench time as well. Under a minute to go. The feed and the finish. Just an absolutely terrific play. By Caitlin Clark, she's part Magic Johnson, part Steph Curry, part her own. That was a great look. That's what makes her so special. Lowby, no. Offensive rebound, guess who? Finish. And an empty possession as the shot clock and game clock are nearly identical. What's happened, exactly what I said couldn't happen. The lead swells to 15 with, with the ball to end the half. Hawks can hold for that last shot as Morgan out there on Caitlin. Again, she's now three points away from becoming the all-time scoring leader at the University of Iowa. Three, two, one, and they don't even get a shot off. Good defense 
your halftime score. The Iowa Hawkeyes, third best team in the country, got 40 first half points. They held the Panthers to just 25. We'll be back with our halftime show. We'll look at some of the highlights, some of the other games going around, and more. You're watching You and I versus Iowa from Learfield. Our from Learfield. She leads all players with 13, and she's the only player in double digits scoring eight for Marshall, who again hadn't made a bucket uh, this year, gabbing three of eight and two of six from deep. Seven points for Stolke. And for you and I, Leading the way, seven points for Buffelli, six for Taryn Wharton, five for Riley Wright off the bench, and two for Adela. Even though it seems like uh, the Hawkeye role players haven't done a great job because they're 10 of 24 from the floor, but there's just no need to change any because if the, the lead is 15 points, you and I do a good job on Caitlin Clark. Her teammates are getting great shots. They haven't shot a great percentage, but again, the Hawkeyes have played well enough to build a solid lead against a good team on the road. So. No need to panic and change a bunch of stuff. Nine assists for the Hawkeyes, zero for the Panthers in that first half. That's a huge stat. I just kind of haven't seen that on the stat sheet yet. Uh, good find by you. That is very, very impactful. Um, something that the Panthers have to change in the second half. Iowa also has 20 points in the paint to you and I's 10. As four of 24 from three point is your combined three-point stats, so neither team shooting uh, great from deep. Well, one of the keys was the free throw line. I think last year in the game at, at Carver Hawkeye, I almost said kidding, at Carver <laughs> Hawkeye, um, the, the Hawkeyes went 28 for 31 from the free throw line. Uh, not on pace for something like that. Actually, you and I have winning the free throw battle right now, just haven't made enough. Uh, so that's a good thing for you and I that certainly don't want to foul anyone they already have. All right, we'll be back with more of our halftime show. At the break, it's the Hawkeyes 40, the Panthers 25. We're watching Panther basketball on the Panther Sports Television Network from Learfield. What do you think these teams talked about in the locker room as we get set for an entertaining second half of play? Well, I'm guessing Coach Bluter touched on just maintaining their poise. They're in a good spot here. They've done a good job controlling the environment. This is nothing new for them playing in front of this many fans. It's just keep your poise, play the possession at the time is guessing one thing they talked about. And then for the Panthers, they're just going to have to make some threes, right? You're not going to, there's no 15 point shots. You're not going to make one shot and have the game be tied. You have to grind away at this thing, chip away. They're going to have to make a few threes and hopefully getting the family back in the game to draw a double team will help get them more open from beyond the arc. That's been today's second half preview brought to you by the University of Northern Iowa Foundation. Sold out crowd inside the McLeod Center here. Love November. It's when the sports overlap. You got football, volleyball taking place, wrestling, basketball. It's a lot of fun if you are a fan of college athletics. It, it, really, it really is, Eric. And, and the preseason Valley favorite against preseason Big Ten favorite here in Cedar Falls, Iowa. You know, arguably the most watched women's sporting event in history of this institution. Scott, take that for granted. Pretty cool day to be a Panther inside the McLeod Center. See if they can make things interesting here in the second half. Very poor shooting by UNI. 7 of 35 from the floor. That's 20%. 1 of 8 from deep. That's 12%. And 10 of 16 from the free throw line. That's 62%. The Panthers have dug themselves a hole. But it's their home court. They beat the Hawks just a couple of years ago on this very court in this building. Caitlin Clark going to work. Beautiful feed and finish. That's a nice looking play. The connection to Stolke. Clearly an emphasis coming out, getting the ball, getting Stolke involved in that same post ISO set in the first half. The Valley can make those three point shots to the Hawks. Extend the defense right at that perimeter. Ball is kicked. Ten seconds were on the shot clock as Martin trying to get her hands, feet 
in the passing lanes there. You know, because Iowa's such a great offensive team, I don't think people talk about their defense quite as much, probably including me. They've done a terrific job. You and I as an elite offensive team, to hold them to 25 points and a half, uh, commendable job, really good urgency, scouting report defense for the Hawkeyes. Panthers averaged 75 points a game last year. The officials have been a factor in this game, as they've been calling it extremely tight. And that is going to be the third personal foul charged against Kalen Morgan. It's a, it, was a, it was a good call. They just an illegal screen. You can't stick your hip out like that. McDermott heads to the bench. A little, sh little shaken up. That's why Terry Wharton came in. They're leaving Morgan in with three fouls. Travel violation. Church against the Hawks. That's their ninth turnover. Let's take another look at it. It's Buffelli. A strong post defender here. 28 rebounds by the Hawks, just 22 for you and I. Buffelli had an open lane as she fell to the court. They call charge? Yes, yes, that's Buffelli's third. So she sat almost the entire second quarter. I don't think she can sit this whole third quarter at him. But she's coming out, but I look for her to come back in and within a minute or two. You just have no choice almost when you're down 17 against a top five team in the country. Also, if we can get a camera on the bench, Maya McDermott is potentially shaken up a little bit. The athletic trainer is looking at her. If you don't have Buffelli or McDermott, Two first-team All-Missouri Valley Conference players. This is going to be nearly impossible to climb back into this thing. Clark draws the foul and more free throws coming for Caitlin Clark. And that is three fouls now on Hadela. Good patience that time. They're face guarding Caitlin Clark. She waited for the right moment and then initiated the back cut through the contact from Hadela. Clark has 14, she sinks the second one. She's tied for the University of Iowa women's basketball career scoring, and she does. She breaks it. Caught, tied, 15, 15, yeah. I bet she breaks it. Fans on their feet trying to help the Panthers. Hadela leaves it short. Fans wanted to travel in transition. Three is good. Gavin Marshall knocks in another tray, and the lead continues to grow. Marshall now with 11. And one. Wharton, that quick first step, gets into the lane and finishes with a bit of contact. Great little hesitation and goal by Terry Wharton. He needed that pass to desperately. You and I have lost separation here with the Hawkeyes that need a swell 220. We see Buffelli come back in just like we talked about. Just a quick minute. Reminder, she had three fouls. You have no choice at this point but to roll on with the foul trouble. And again, I do not see Maya McDermott. I think she might have gone into the locker room to be looked at by the athletic trainer. And I didn't see what play that. First, I thought maybe she just got the wind knocked out of her or something. It appears to be something different. Buffelli back in, under eight to play third quarter. Clark, very patient with this offensive set. There's the jumper, and the rebound to Buffelli and the Panthers push it across the half court line. Great defense that time by you and I. Big shot. To feel good for Green, who had a tough shooting performance in the first half. But the answer, and she's feeling it. 0 for 9 in her first two games from deep. Well, you knew that wasn't going to keep happening. She's too good of a shooter, and she has picked the right game to get back on track. Two strong offensive rebounds, and three fouls now charged against Hannah Stolke. I think if I'm Stolke, I just let her lay it back in. You. You've got a 19-point lead. She just reaches out and gives a foul, and the fellow has got a great chance for two free throws anyway, and you got to probably sit down. Sometimes it's better just to let him lay it in. 
Panthers have 10 points when they're pushing that tempo off a missed shot going the other way. Buffelli playing with those three fouls and shooting woes continue. 23% from the floor, 20% from deep, and right at 60% as a team from the charity strike. Well, it's, a, it's a tall enough task to beat the number three team in the country, but when you're missing free throws, makes it even harder. Buffelli last year led the team in scoring, rebounds, and field goal percentage. Into the paint. Good spin and finish as Sharon Goodman, the 6'3 junior center out of Lime Springs, Iowa, Crestwood High School, who averages nearly a dozen points and three and a half rebounds in 19 minutes of action. A whistle wow. away from, and it's UNI's head coach, Tony Warren, calling a timeout. We'll step aside and take a break with them. Hawks starting to pull away. You're watching UNI versus Iowa from Learfield. Monday night matchup takes center stage. Russell Wilson leads Broncos country as they ride into Buffalo. Can Josh Allen and the high-flying offense seal another win for Bills Mafia? Broncos Bills on ESPN and ABC. ESPN Plus gets you ready for the NFL all season long. Get highlights every week with NFL primetime. And live games return week 11 with a Super Bowl rematch. Stream the NFL all season long with ESPN Plus. <laughs> trip to Moline for the 2024 NBC Women's Basketball Tournament. Be sure to download the Hoops in the Heartland app presented by Great Southern Bank. Get all the information you need to know about the tournament schedule, hotel accommodations, and other fun events during the tournament. Download the Hoops in the Heartland. You've been there a number of times. The Valley's good. It, the Valley is good. It's a fun, it's a fun event. I go there now that I'm not even coaching just for fun to watch all the great teams. Getting a quick score out of the timeout. Yeah, the Panthers had a big non-conference victory. Belmont out of the NBC has defeated an SEC opponent in three of the last four seasons. They had a dominant 76-50 to victory over Georgia on Friday. Belmont, great, Missouri State, Southern Illinois, a lot of tough programs battling through that non-conference. Absolutely great current 7.8 over Iowa State in the nap center middle of the third quarter. So you and I... Good little offensive set to get great to play downhill. Clark has it. She gets it tipped away. No call on the foul. And it'll be Iowa basketball underneath their own hoop. Clark looking for her ninth foul drawn on the game. That's an interesting stat that's new in the box for the last couple of years. Last year against the Panthers, she drew nine fouls. So already eight through the middle of the second quarter. She thought that was supposed to be the ninth. It wasn't. Clark, double team comes, spins away. There's the night. And now Caitlin Clark is the new all time scorer in the University of Iowa women's basketball program, surpassing Megan Gustafson as Caitlin has over 2,800. And last year, she had over 1,000 points in the season. Well, Iowa is a, a very, very 
tradition-rich women's basketball program. They have actually five of the last six Big Ten Conference Players of the Year. Incredible. It wasn't long ago that Megan Custom was on this team, and she was the best post player I'd ever seen. But she was so terrific, and now a few years later, they've got the basement player of the year. You know you're good when they retire your uniform right away. Correct. Put it up in the rafters. 5-20, third quarter. Eric Braley, Adam DeJody on the call here for the Panther Sports Network. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday afternoon. We know a lot of people are tuning in as this thing sold out in less than an hour. Going to work, and I think she's my MVP for the Panthers in this game. She's probably might play terrific. It's going to be a fun season to watch her add to the... And she's not shying away from these bright lights. Great catch and release. Clark got her feet under her, lets it fly. She's working on that triple-double. And she is 18, along with eight rebounds and eight assists. And that's really a, a great short corner shot by Grace Papelli, but that last look for Clark is really the first time that she's had a really clean look. That's as open as she's going to get. People don't leave her completely wide open. Beautiful feet, and then she's more open there. Now, receiving, receiving a screen away, she just tight curled it. Pull the ball on the block, it's a tough defend, and drop it off for the easy two. Hawkeyes putting on a clinic right now. And the Panthers are without Maya McDermott. And Gabby Marshall continues to have an outstanding performance. The fifth year guard out of Cincinnati, Ohio, is feeling it today. But she's playing terrific, and the way that she impacts the game is to make threes. And when you're a three-point shooter, you got to make threes, and she's done that today. Offensive rebound foul, and a chance to go to the free throw line. The foul came from Sharon Goodman. Well, have free throws after this commercial break. It's been all Iowa here in the second half. Hold on to a 63-37 lead. You're watching Panther basketball on the Panther Sports TV Network from Learfield. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend. Haul or tow just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Now lease a built Ford Tough F-150 STX for $3.99 a month for 36 months. Only at your local Ford dealer. I would say what sets us apart is how we treat our customers. I'm very proud to represent CFU and continue to provide the level of service that's been established by decades of quality service and establishing that trust within the community. What sets CFU apart is how reliable our service is. I've been guaranteeing my work for 40 plus years, and I'll guarantee it for 40 more. Quink Siding, Windows, and Roofing is known for their experience, attention to detail, and outstanding customer service. They're on the forefront with technology and innovations for home improvement. Locally and family-owned, they take pride in everything they do. Check out their website or Facebook page to find many satisfied customers of Quake Siding, Windows, and Roofing. DePaco Credit Union strengthens your well-being. Build strong communities. Because when our members love life, it makes a brighter community for all. DePaco can help you be well.
is looking like a top one, two, or three team in the country with LSU losing a couple days ago. I would assume Iowa sits in the number two spot. Here's a look at that last play and why we're going to be shooting free throws here. Got not a lot of weaknesses in this Iowa team, Coach. Uh, not at all. Definitely be one <laughs> as they get into the deeper part of the Big Ten season, into the NCAA tournament. But they have a great roster led by a great player who makes everyone around her better. She's not just a scorer. She has the ability to get other people open shots. And if they make those, they're just a, a very, very difficult team to guard. So here's Grace Buffelli leading the way with nine points. And misses that one. And frustration you can see on her face. Again, this uh, one of the main storylines is Maya McDermott, who averaged 17 points a game last year, has three. And she's only played ten minutes. And I'm not sure if she's coming back into this game here. That's why you're seeing a lot of run out of number 22, the backup point guard, Taryn Wharton. Good take by Wharton going 100 miles an hour downhill. Yeah, McDermott, first player on the bench next to assistant coach Caitlin Owen, just hasn't come back in. Not sure the extent of the injury, but that's obviously something crucial to keep an eye on as you and I look to navigate this very difficult non-conference schedule, trying to get enough resume points to build a non-conference resume that would be worthy of an at-large bid. Um, come March, certainly have the talent. Need to stack up some good non-conference wins. They already have one great one in their hip pocket over Horizon League favorite Green Bay. Caitlin Clark, currently 23 points, 9 rebounds, and 10 assists. Real close to that triple-double stoppage in play here. As you see the replay, foul in the act. Talked about a little about you and I schedule, but after this, they're going to go to Ball State, pick second in the MAC. After that, they head to Las Vegas to play in a tournament at the South Point. They play Syracuse and Vanderbilt, both Power Five teams. Come on, go at South Dakota, very good women's basketball program. At Creighton, their wow. top 15 in the country. South Dakota State, one of the best mid major programs in in the country, and then hold on at Hilton Coliseum at Missouri State. <laughs> Just an absolute gauntlet. So a loss here against the Hawkeyes doesn't really hurt the Panthers. It doesn't hurt them. They got to perform better. Obviously, this game has gotten away from them, but it's not going to make their breakers their season in terms of being the only chance to, to achieve a great non-conference win and build that resume. Panthers 11 of 20 from the free throw line. Open look. Gearbox drains it out of Sycamore, Illinois. Transfer from Iowa State. Averaging four points per game heading into this one. Panthers went zone that time. Textbook great zone offense by the Hawkeyes. Inside the high post, kicked out to Fearbach for three. Caitlin Clark got banged up a little bit on her finger. She's asking for a sub. Now, I've played basketball a lot. A jammed finger is, happens quite frequently. It really hurts. But it, it hurts. I don't know if Iowa will need Clark to come back into this game as the Panthers have just dug themselves such a deep hole, Clark being tended to by the athletic training staff. Two and a half to play third quarter. Strong off the backboard. And Horton, the true sophomore, continuing to push. Great move by the Montezuma native. But another empty possession. Two minute warning here in the third quarter. More rebounds for the Hawkeyes, better shooting for Iowa, and great distribution of scoring points. Five on the shot clock, lost it momentarily. Three, two, needs to let it go. And it's blocked, and we have a shot clock violation as the Panthers turned it up a couple notches on that defensive half-court set. Interesting, that's the first time this entire game we've mentioned the shot clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hasn't been a ton of... Hasn't been under 15, yeah. Maybe a handful of times. Buffelli 
Had a good first quarter. Picked up a couple fouls. Sat the majority of the second quarter. Playing with three fouls now. And you see the belly against O'Grady in space. You can tell early in this game that was a huge huge emphasis for the Northern Iowa offense, and then Buffelli got her second foul. We didn't get to see her in space against Iowa's bigs as much as the Panthers probably wanted. Come back in the second half, she's playing three fouls, and go right back at it. Unique strategy to pull the Panthers off the free throw line, especially with how poorly you and I have shot from the free throw. So Buffelli is the only one there. If the shot doesn't go in, but they both do. Panthers going to go to their extended 2-3 defense, try to force a little pace. Buck 20 to play, third quarter. Panthers thought they had a steal, and now free throws coming for the Hawks. Hannah Stolke, she, she's still an underclassman as well. Stolke. Stolke. Has nine points. She's only played nine minutes in this game. Well, Missouri Valley Conference student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mbc-sports.com slash one valley. Got to the rim, couldn't finish. Clark back in, a little too deep that time. Under a minute to play, third quarter. Open look, and she knocks it in. The confidence to let that one fly. Stolke on the season, that's her second made three-pointer. She was one of two heading into this game. And that shot isn't a huge deal in this game, but her making those threes takes Iowa from a great team to a potential Final Four team. Her ability to step out and make those threes. So, not a huge deal today, but come March, that is going to be imperative. She's an 83% shooter from the floor. High percentage. Took a dribble to get a little closer. Hadela falls down. And it's a blocking foul with 24 seconds to play. And the Hawks don't need Stolke to make that 10-footer right there. They don't need that. But they need her to make threes to pull the other team's five. When they play some of these national teams that have six, seven, six, six centers, pull them away from the basket. It's going to be a huge key for Iowa. As we see, Kayla Clark get a little rest here. End of the third. She needs one more rebound to get that triple-double. Well, I know there's a lot of youngsters here watching this game idolizing these Panthers and Hawkeyes. But work on your free throw shooting. That's right. It's yeah. pretty important. I coach fifth grade girls basketball now. I think the whole team's here. Uh, here at Cedar Falls, it's something we talk all the time about making free throws. Fifth graders not so good at it. One of the things you can work on and control. Well, Bree Robinson comes in for her first action today. As Maya McDermott continues to sit on the bench with an injury. Foul as the shot clock is turned off. It goes against a vaulter. Emerson Green banged up. Maya McDermott injured. Riley Goebel, uh, who was on the NBC All Freshman team last year, not able to play in this game. That's three starters or, or top seven players that are not playing in the second half. And unfortunately for the Panthers, this late swelling to over 30 points, probably not going to be a lot of uh, minutes for some of those key players. Just a, It's a long season. This thing's four months long. They need to preserve some of that stuff. Probably in the Hawkeyes in the fourth quarter as well. We're going to see some players that maybe don't normally log as many minutes. And that's just how it happens. That's how sports work. Hawks can hold for the final shot here. Looking to add to their large lead. Beautiful feed. Took an assist away from Caitlin. <laughs> she did take a great point there. 
She gets the points anyway. A huge third quarter for the Iowa Hawkeyes. A lot of plays like that. A little step aside be back with fourth quarter action from the McLeod Center in Cedar Falls. You have it tuned in to you and I versus Iowa from Learfield. Rufus hates being stuck inside. Mm. Luckily, Amy saved big at Amazon. Turns out with the right gear. Rufus rips. This year, take the time to melt into your holiday moments with Lindor. Irresistibly smooth chocolate from the Lint Master Chocolatier. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. Plus, America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR for 60 months, plus zero payments for 90 days on the Hyundai Tucson. Now, during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. We love our house. The outdoor space is great, but we do have invasive weeds. I think they got in the house. I think you're right. Stay away from my family! Why are you so strong? At least Geico makes bundling my home and car insurance easy. We save so much. Will we get the spray stuff? Get the spray stuff. Where is your... He's up here! For bundling made easy, go to Geico.com. <laughs> How'd you get that mixed with your combo? These fries and rings? At BK, you can build your combo. Oh, is it Coke, too? Yep, sides and drinks, too. BK, having your way. Yeah. Discover different Black Friday deals at Target each week. Prices and early Black Friday deals at Target. It's free and easy. A huge third quarter has the Hawkeyes up, but this broadcast is brought to you by Fibernet TV from Cedar Falls Utilities. Get connected to the power of service. Iowa scored 35 points in that third quarter to the Panthers 16. That's a huge third quarter. Previously, Iowa scored 20 in the first, 20 in the second, and 35 in the third. That's why they led the nation in scoring last year with a lot of good players back. Started with that opening set when they went right into the post to Stolfi and never really stopped. Points in the paint, 32 to 16. Second chance points, 15 to 1. Fast breaks, 19 to 1. And one area you and I leads on the stat sheet is bench points, 22 to 11 there. That's because a couple starters have been injured. There's a look at Lisa Bluter, UNI alum, 1983. 39th year as the head coach, 24th year at the University of Iowa. Does it the right way. And there is a look at the 1982-83 UNI women's basketball team. Can you find her? There she is. Upper corner. Got the degree. Laid the foundation. Probably no NIL deals not back then. No, not back then. Clark on the court. Many would love to see her get that 10th rebound to get that triple double. Marshall a rare miss today. And then a foul on the ground. And that's Buffelli, I believe. And that is her fourth. Story of the game. Just an inability to... It's on Bree Robinson. Good. So Bree Robinson gets called for the foul. Really good. In a, in a bad situation of being a blowout, good to get Bree Robinson some minutes. They really 
coaching staff really thinks a lot of for the freshman out of Lincoln, Nebraska, is going to be a nice player for the program going forward and not obviously the score you want for for meaningful minutes to come in, but against this kind of a team and this kind of environment, certainly good to get her some experience. Another foul, that warrants free throws here. And another missed free throw. The Panthers are 16 of 28 from the free throw line. Iowa is 16 of 23. So the Iowa Hawkeyes, again, selling out their season tickets. They also broke the women's basketball all-time attendance record for a single game, 55,646 on hand for the crossover Kinnick exhibition. An awesome opportunity to showcase this team, these women, and the sport of college hoops. Trevor Hawkeye Arena holds about 15,500. In the foul center today, almost 7,000 people here for a women's basketball game. They're standing all around. It is standing room only. Could have sold even more tickets, but continue to pack people in here. Under nine to play as Clark will inbound. There you see the shot. A very intimate setting for this in-state battle. Great defense by McFelly. Goes vertical, stands her ground. Fortunately can't secure the defensive rebound, but really good post defense by the veteran McFelly. Kate Martin on the weak side gets it. The grad student averaging nine points per game. Another whistle. There's been times... The crowd has definitely had a huge impact for both teams, as obviously a lot of Caitlin Clark and Iowa Hawkeye supporters in attendance today. It was amped up early and had a few of those shots gone in. Emerson Green had a few good looks, things like that early. This place was ready to explode. Unfortunately, it just didn't happen. That, that sports, and you got to live with it. And 30 other opportunities on the schedule to, to make an impact. And this crowd is ready to go today. I was really impressed. Um, with the number of you and I that fans that, that showed up this afternoon, I, I thought maybe there might be even more Iowa fans. Because Iowa has a nice crowd as well, but there's a ton of purple in here, and it's really good to see um, them supporting this women's basketball team. Kind of fun to have tailgating before a women's basketball game yes. in mid-November, 62 in Cedar Falls. My daughter was out there tailgating. I, I didn't go out there pre-game. I, I drank water, but boy, it was a cool scene out there in the parking lots. A lot of general admission tickets sold, so a couple of hours before, a ton of people were out there as it's first come, first serve, before you get to pick your seats. And again, hats off to Lisa Bluter and Coach Fenley with Iowa State of playing the home-and-home -home series. You don't have to do that. Caitlin Clark doesn't have to go to Cedar Falls and the Nap Center. But that's the appreciation for these mid-major programs. And Bluter really got her opportunity after leading the Drake Bulldogs to championships. Yeah, playing at UNI, coaching at Drake, um, she understands that these mid-major programs can play basketball. And she understands that her team will be there. I was better at 4 o'clock today than they were at noon today. For having played in this environment, playing a good Valley team. And they played tremendous. They have a 30-point lead and have played pretty well. Clark. Pulls it back out with 10 on the shot clock. Clark with 23 points. Now the all-time leading scorer in Iowa history. Bad decision there by Molly Davis as she's falling out of bounds. The Panthers quickly to the other end. And as the Iowa transfer almost came down with the offensive rebound with Wettering. You and I. 15% from the behind the arc, 24% from the floor. A little feisty down low. <laughs> Sharon Goodman, who's about twice the size of Cable Alvey, but a couple of Iowa prep kids who, who uh, played their high school ball in Iowa. Battle it out underneath the basket. Alternating possession arrow, points in favor of UNI. Again, if you're just tuning in, what in the world happened? Some poor shooting by the Panthers and a strong second quarter. Got the Hawkeyes the separation they needed and then a huge third quarter 
put this thing to bed. It was really that end of the second quarter where the lead was eight or nine, and it swelled to 15 right before the half in that last minute and a half. And the Hawks made some threes in the third quarter. Open look, long, and Caitlin Clark now with a triple-double, if you're keeping track at home, 23 points on 6 of 13 shooting, 2 of 5 from deep, 9 of 10 at the free throw line, 10 rebounds, 11 assists, a steal, 1 foul, 3 turnovers in 31 minutes. Clark just impacts the game in so many ways, and now is one of only two players in D1 history to record a triple-double in four different seasons. And she really hasn't forced much. She's done a good job taking what's uh, given to her. You and I have done a very good job defending her. They know the scouting report. The other Hawkeyes have stepped up to help them build this lead. Under seven to play here. Clark had an amazing offseason as that shot by Goodman is off the mark where she won pretty much any award that was creative. She won them all. She won all <laughs> yeah, the I mean, awards. If you can think of an award, Caitlin Clark was at the ceremony getting the plaque, the trophy. Good offensive rebound. May Smith, weight trophy winner, along with the AP winner. Don Staley Award. First team AP All American, Cosida All American, a total of 19 postseason honors from last year. And what she's really done is not only, obviously, she amplified in the women's basketball world, but she's made women's basketball a national sport in the national media. They're showing highlights on Sports Center. She's doing commercials um, for different companies. She's talking to Stephen A. Smith. And she's, she's really taken women's basketball and made it a prime sport in the country. Um, and that's really good for the game. A rare miss from the free throw line is Caitlin Clark. He's probably done. And the Iowa fans rise to their feet. Another day at the office, another triple-double for Caitlin Clark. Now, her, her average is going to go down. She averaged 36 points through the first two games. And I think she would even tell you that's not sustainable. I mean, yeah. with, the, with the defenses they're going to see and the amount of good players they have on their team, that's just not quite sustainable, and that's why it's called an average. But she's certainly going to score her fair share of points. Taylor McKay, the sophomore guard out of Fremont, Nebraska. That's her first make of the year. She was 0 for 5 before that shot. Weathering, good presence in the paint. A little high-low look from Hayden Love to Wettering against the zone, flashing that drill in from the short corner after the high post touch. Well, this is the 29th meeting between these two programs. Iowa leads it 25-3. to Cedar Falls won in 2019, 88-66. 2019, not that long ago. The Panthers have beaten... The Cyclones, Kansas State, a lot of Power 5 wins. They won, you know, making the NIT or NCAA almost every single year for the last decade. Postseason play 12 out of 13 years for the Panthers. Wow. And they'll be in the postseason this year. They will. Green light for McCabe. Again, coming in off the bench, Clark. I want to go back to Clark, though. Just the fact that she always rises to the occasion, to have that spotlight on you, to have that pressure on you, it's intense. That's a great point. She never can have an off day. Nope. Um, not only on the basketball floor, but in public. I mean, the eyes are on her, the kids asking for autographs, the pictures, um, going out in public is an exhausting experience. It's, it, she's a celebrity. And, and she she is. And... Of course, is this the final year of college hoops for Caitlin, or does she just continue to add more and more points and accomplishments? 
Well, that's where women's basketball is significantly different than men's basketball. In men's basketball, she would be in the NBA because Correct. of how well they pay. The WNBA does not pay that well. She could probably make more money in college. So it wouldn't surprise me for her to come back for another season. And that's where men's basketball doesn't have to play against all Americans who are in their fourth year <laughs> because they play for the, you know, Pistons. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh. We have a timeout. Hot guys rolling. 87 46. You're watching Panther Basketball on the Panther Sports Television Network from Learfield. This year, take the time to melt into your holiday moments with Lindor. Irresistibly smooth chocolate from the Lindt Master Chocolatier. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. Plus, America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey on every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR for 60 months, plus zero payments for 90 days on the Hyundai Tucson. Now, during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Mm, how'd you get that mixed with your combo? These fries and rings. At BK, you can build your combo. Oh, is it Coke, too? Yep, sides and drinks, too. BK, having your way. Yeah. Discover different Black Friday deals at Target each week. prices and early Black Friday deals at Target. Desmond Howard, here to see my college football collection. Impressive stuff, little man. Geico makes it easy to insure. My car and RV too. Wow. Gloves from your famous catch. How'd you get those? Great smile. Is this from when the band ran on the field? Yep, yeah, 1982. Hmm. What is this? Oh, no, don't touch the... Uh, Not oh. so fast, my friends. Not so fast, my friends. It'll turn off eventually. For all your insurance needs, from home to car to RV, it's easy to get go. We showed up. Let's show up. Three, two, one. Game time. Boom. I got you, baby. Oh, floor, gotta love that. How she keep it going on? Gotta love that. Tell me like a pro, do you love that? Gotta love that. 87-46 Hawkeyes rocking and rolling here in the McLeod Center. When it comes to quality, comfort, and exceptional style, insist on the authentic brand label. Embrace authenticity in your wardrobe with authentic brand collegiate and corporate branded attire. The favorite choice nationwide. So interesting. That LSU lost earlier this week. UConn about to lose. I think you're looking at the number one ranked team in the country. It's very possible the Hawkeyes could be a three and zero week with a top ten victory on their resume and a forty point win over a good team on the road. Right. That, that, I think that's a recipe for being the number one team in the country. Um, the great thing about college basketball is it's great for PR and recruiting and things like that, but it really comes down to the tournament at the end of the year, which is the great thing about college basketball. It's not the old BCS in football where it's a uh, fashion <laughs> show, but it's really a cool deal if it happens for the Hawkeyes. Three and a half to play here. First sold-out crowd, part of that Caitlin Clark effect of fans just want to be in the building to see her do her thing and go to work. And you and I did a deal where... To guarantee a seat for this game, season tickets. And they broke a record number of season tickets. And then they opened it up for individual game tickets and sold out in less than an hour. People wanted to see this in-state matchup. And they wanted to see Caitlin Clark in an intimate setting. Because she's going to be playing in front of 15,000, 20,000 fans almost every night. How about in front of 7,000? Yeah, I think you'll see a lot of these fans for you and I come back. If, if they have a very good team this year, picked to win the Valley. Obviously, they're going to win a lot of games. 
and hopefully the attendance is is as good as they've ever had based on those number of season tickets because they've got a great great team on the floor this year. Again, the Panthers without three of their starting players with a couple of injuries and outstanding offensive and defensive performance by the Hawkeyes in this game, sitting at 88 points. She's a nice player. Molly Davis with the floater, Central Michigan transfer out of the MAC. First year was last year. Add Dave does much needed added guard depth. Offensive rebound and finish for Riley Wright, who appeared in 24 games with two starts last year. I'm excited to see what Riley Wright can do for the Panthers this year. He's going to add some dynamic playmaking ability for them on the floor. Checking out for the final time, Fearbach. So the road ahead for the Hawkeyes and the Panthers does not look easy. No guaranteed W's on either of these teams' upcoming schedules before conference play hits right around the turn of the calendar to 2024. Panthers aren't back in the McLeod Center until December 9th. It's a long ways from now. In South Dakota State, lost a couple players to preseason injury, but it's always a great mid-major team. So it'll be a test on the, uh, on the Panthers. You go on the road, neutral site against two Power Five teams at South Dakota at Creighton. We're going to have a lot more data about the Panthers when they come back <laughs> in the Cloud Center in a few weeks. Under two to play, fourth and final quarter. It's been all Hawkeyes as some of the bench players getting some run. The Hawkeyes in this game, 51% shooting from the floor and 40% from deep. 11 of 27. Gabby Marshall, 5 of 10 to lead the way in that category. It'll grab there, so it'll send... Riley right to the free throw line. 20 more rebounds for the Hawks in this game. And right looking to add to her total. 